Hi, we welcome you all back to our live sessions. So I just want to know um, what do you all understand by watercolors? What are watercolors? Yes, it is a medium used for coloring, but uh, watercolors are, uh, they are not exactly liquid colors. Yes, uh, nowadays you get liquid watercolors too. So you're not wrong in that. <laughs> yes, watercolors are uh, a sort of pigments which are used uh, for uh, coloring on a particular uh, paper. So that is a watercolor paper or a heavy GSM paper. And it gives a very smooth finish. And um, it, uses, it uses a lot of water. So if you want to darken the shade, you use the color directly from your box. That is your color box. Or else you can wa add water to it and use a lighter shade. It is always advisable to use a palette with you or if you are using it directly from, from the box, put it onto a, uh, you know, a plastic plate or a tray and then add a little water and use it because they, um, you know, it the pigment gives a very good um, life to your colors if water is added to it. Yeah. What do you understand by a watercolor paper? So now watercolor papers are basically um, handmade cotton papers which have a particular gram that is a GSM which we call. So you get from a 100 GSM, a 75 GSM to maybe a 400. I think 400 is the last one. So we are using a, um, a above GSM uh, paper that is a 300 uh, GSM paper so that will help you to absorb the water so it helps you to absorb the uh, the paper to absorb the water and it gives you a very smooth and a very nice finish so once the paper absorbs all the liquid that is all the water only the pigment stays up and the pigment is called watercolors Okay, so now I'm going to just shift on my screen. If you don't have a watercolor paper right now, um, you can use any drawing paper as of now, but uh, the finish will gives more better with a watercolor paper. Yes, and what is the difference between a poster color and a watercolor? So now the difference between a poster color and a watercolor is that you um, watercolors are pigments having water base in it whereas in poster colors you have a watercolor base as well as a acrylic base to it so both of it's a, a poster color is a combination of watercolor as well as acrylic color now the ratio is generally watercolor being 70 and uh, acrylic being 30 but it depends from company to company. You can just post a color companies like you have it in Camlin. It's a different uh, thing a different, um, you know, combination which they use. And uh, for bombs, it's a different combination. So it depends upon from company to company. Basically, the finish is the same. I had a question. So, no, it is not mandatory to use... Uh, the water brush hmm, on paper first ma'am is it mandatory to water brush on paper first yeah in certain uh, like in certain of our techniques we use a wet and wet techniques which is to water the whole paper and then use the next part then add color to it but um, it is uh, not necessary in certain techniques we just blend off uh, directly on the paper so there are different techniques in the main course of watercolor course but right now today we are not going to go into that deep we are just going to take one painting like one thing which we have selected and we are just going to work on that 
so this is not completely a wet in wet uh, technique which i'm going to show it is going to be a little different it has got basically to both of them it is a little wet as well as a wet technique is also there as well as a dry technique is also there in this now uh, can we use an ivory sheet um i don't know how well the ivory sheet will work but um, if you have a drawing book uh, you can might as well use a drawing book right now like i have drawn a tree and uh, a bird that sorry two birds together now i will just draw it up again with a pen darken it up with a pencil and then erase it so i also want you guys to do the same thing so darken it up with a pencil and then erase it out because um, if you once you have finished the painting you will not be able to erase anything so this is going to be my main part of the tree now as uh, you know that the tree is not straight any time it is never straight any time i'm going to bring out my tree from this side so now i'm going to darken up can you see the darken pencil line now huh? yeah like you know the tree is never straight enough so i'm just going to make you branches now for the top one so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to give the top a branch hmm? now from here i will just give another one now from here i will just one branch coming like this and maybe an other one going up like this now you can see now i'm just going to bring this part down i'm going to draw my bird so i'm just drawing one circle coming down and going with the other one once you are done drawing with the tree we will erase it out erasing doesn't mean that you erase the whole color out means the whole um you know the whole pencil line out erasing means that you will just you still have the line behind i can see the line behind it won't be visible to you guys right now so i can see the line behind erasing means that you are going to lighten the whole shade out don't draw too dark make it light i have drawn it dark so that you guys can understand ke okay, where the whole tree is going around my bird i'm going to have it white so my whole birds uh, my bird is going to be blank but my bird area is going to be white white so if you are using a camlin color box we are going to use this white now i am taking a 10 number brush now i have got two containers with me one is to wash and one is to take the new color so the first thing what i will be doing is around my bird Hmm. around my bird below the stem part i am just going to add a little water now i am going to take the white color i know white is invisible so don't ask me anything about the white color which i have added you won't be able to see it until and unless we'll go uh, ahead 
Now I'm just extending the white color a little more on the sides, on all the sides of the circle which I had formed. Remember that you're not going to go into the um, area for, of the branches. And just start adding blue okay now if you're take if you have a Camlin box take uh, this blue we have done white around the circle uh, near the birds now we have taken blue so I am just adding the blue near and around the white area I am not going deep inside the white area because I want that white to be seen. So I will be just having a little blend of the blue in it. See water coloring, the only disadvantage of water coloring is that you really need to be fast enough in working. If you are slow then you get a patch which we don't want. So this is our first part which we have done. Now slowly and steadily we will increase the color. Increase the color of the blue. So we will be having at least two to three uh, fingers of the lighter blue shade. And then we will have it, we will have the darker shades. So for the lighter shade only, let's continue with that. So I am just enmarking where I want the light dark, uh, you know, till where I want my shade to move out. So this is going to be my circle where I'm going to move with my shade. Like I told you, you, you need to be really very fast to blend the colors, otherwise your whole paper will absorb the color and then you get a mark on it which we don't want. It's going to be a very slow and steady blending what we are doing. It's not going to be too fast. The only thing you need to remember is you need to add water to every part where you are blending first. So first add water to the part where you are going to blend the color. So now you have got a lighter, lighter, lightest, a lighter and a little darker tone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to still darken the darker tone. So I'm going to do again a little bit direct coloring that is without the water or from the palette directly on the paper. So I get a nice dark tone. Always remember divide the page into two half likes.
now we have got three different varieties of shade we will be slowly 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 adding darker shades so now for that i'm going to use a bigger brush that is number 12 and start working on it so like i told you i am just going to add little water on the area where i'm going to work first then i'm going to use a little darker shade of blue and then just give a blend this is the first base coat which we are giving to our whole painting then we will be adding shades accordingly so for the shade we don't require any perfection thing but later when we are doing the whole painting we will give it Now I am adding further ahead a further darker shade. Now when you are giving it now, just make sure that Anna, you are going in a round motion. Because we are going to show the whole drawing as a part of round. Now we will add the next dark shade. Now when you are taking these shades, take it directly from your, uh, you know, the box and a little water on your brush and then you can start blending. So when you are taking, you just blend off both the colors together. So that is your blue, the lighter blue as well as the darker blue. And in the, you know, this part, the part where you have started the color with, that can be a little darker because we have to, as it is shown, that it is going to go into the dark shades. Now we will use the next dark tone.
again i am blending both my colors together it looks as if it is a part of the same color You can see I have left few areas in the corner. Why I have left? Because I will be adding a little black tone to it later. Now I will be taking a little black color, adding it in my, see my black color is watery. Okay, you can see the black tone is completely watery. To that I will use my darker tone. So I will get the darkest shade of blue. Again, I will do the same thing on my other part also. giving shades in your watercolor you need to be really fast enough now the main fun comes now you are going to use this is the third coat which we are giving to our watercolor and the main thing is that now you know where the colors need to be put and you will be starting directly from the palette with a dark, darker tone. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, the white shade too to give a lighter tone near the you know uh, the parrots you want to call them parrot you can call them parrot you want to call them anything they are just birds so when you add a white shade to them you can see now they have got highlighted slowly I will just blend off this white shade in the other areas too. As you are blending, you will start getting the shades, the darker shades of the whole color. Now you can see there are three prominent shades. Now we will go with the next dark shade.
for the third coat which you are giving don't add too much water I would say let the color be dark enough not that much dark also that let it be quite dark enough so that you can move your hand properly with it with the color blending Now this time we will first give the black shade. So I have given it all in my lower part. Now I am taking my dark blue. And start blending with this shade only. So the, la the last part is almost ready. Now we will do again the black shade on this part. we will allow the whole thing to get dried up so i am just going to do some finishing till that time so that is adding darker shade uh, or lighter shade as in the places where it is required as your drawing dries up you will start um, you know it will start becoming a little lighter tone So to dry it up a little faster, I will go with a hair dryer and get it dried up. So this is a number 8. I am going to do it completely black. Now when you are doing this part, I will tell everybody not to add too much of water. If you add too much of water, it will become a lighter shade. It will become a very lighter shade, which we don't want. We want it to be enough dark. So now we are done with the parrot part. Since we are showing it as a night scene, we are not going to do too much on the uh, coloring of the parrot. Now comes the tree. 
Now the tree at the night is generally brownish black. So the first I'm going to use a flat brush and a round brush both this time. So with the flat brush I'm first going to do a darker brown. So we have a nice brown inside our branches which is also colored with blue. <laughs> yes, sometimes it does happen that when we are coloring we don't see then we just color it off. So this is what about the tree what we want to show. Now I will start adding the uh, black tone to it. Now again I am not going to use too much of water in my black tone because I want it to be a darker brown black shade. You can see it's a dark brown black shade which we have because we already have a base coat of brown that's why it uh, it is easier for us uh, to give a darker brown black shade. In this part when you are doing just make sure that you are doing a good finishing because this is going to be your final now. You will not be able to add any color to it. Any color to your drawing other than on this part. Only when we are adding our greens. So we will be just adding little greens here and there. So just make sure that your lines and everything are coming in a proper finish. can color a little cover a little bit here and there but we will not be able to cover the whole thing so just make sure that kids don't do too much of watery in this part and you don't mess up with the branches ka, the minute uh, you know branches which we have given
just be a little careful while doing this work. I would please allow, suggest mamas please help your babies to handle this part of the tree. But my kids are smart enough, huh? they can do much better. They don't require much mama's help, but it's okay. Mama can just do a little bit of checking. I will slowly add a little more darker tone. Again, when I'm adding a little more darker tone, we really need to be a little careful because this is going to be our main part. Now we are not going to add a lot of color. Now again, I'm going to use a hair dryer and uh, dry it up. Okay, now we come to our leaves, which are the most shining part. So for the leaf, again, I'm going to use a smaller brush. So again, I'm going to use a nice eight wala brush or maybe even a six will also do. Now I'm going to do combination of leaves. Huh? So I have a sap green, I have an emerald green and I have this another light green tone. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to sap green the whole thing. Then I will go with the emerald green and then if required I will go with the other lighter shade of green. So I'm just taking enough of green in my uh, palette in my brush too. Take a little water, they won't take too much water because we want green to be prominently seen. And slowly just add as tips, as certain tips near the, you know, anywhere, everywhere, around the whole thing. So we are just going with a, with the brush. So I, I can go even over my branches huh? because leaves don't tell that I am not on my branch. So they are spread it all over. I am not taking till the down part. I am just moving till here. If you want a little more darker tone of sap green, then just take it directly. So we are not taking it directly right now because I'm slowly, slowly going to add like we added the other colors, like the blue tones. We added first a coat, then a second coat and then the third coat. The same way we are going to do with this also. But remember that you are not going to put too much of water like we had done for our first base coat. So for the blue coat which we had done. So in that we had added too much of water. Uh, that is enough water, not too much of water rather, enough water for your work to be done so that it smooths, uh, spreads around smooth and you get a good uh, color finish. Not much near the, you know, birds because we want the birds also to be highlighted. Okay, now I am taking the next green. So that's my emerald green. So my emerald green is like an emerald color. So, you know, when you just put it, it comes up, it highlights. So I'm just going to dab it off. Dab, dab, dab and dab. See, sometimes your brush becomes like that. It's completely fine. Uh, when you put it into water, it will become normal. Since it's the night time which we are trying to show, night time generally has a lot of darker leaves seen 
rather than lighter leaves so you know i am just putting more of the darker tone and then less of the lighter tone just adding so you can see there is a light shade behind there is a dark shade behind that's what we want now again i'm going to use the sap green itself i'm not going to use the third green which i had decided but i'm going to use the sap green itself with uh, the natural color of sap green as it is not adding uh, water to it and just adding drops and bits here and there This is what I have done. Now I feel that we need to add a little more white also to it. So we will add a little yellow to give a little lighter tone. So now when you are using a yellow, you, you had washed the brush in a dirty water. So I would say that you wash it in a clean water too, which we had kept it aside. You remember we had kept two box, uh, this of uh, water to... Uh, water containers with us so that you don't spill off your yellow your yellow is a very delicate color so see i am just adding bits and bits of yellow so once your yellow uh, you know uh, touches your green it becomes a lighter tone by itself so once it is done like this see Now to the whole drawing what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller brush that is number two. So this is number one. So we will take a number one brush and we will add dots on it uh, so that you know it gives a flowery look. So we will use uh, in certain areas we will use red dots in certain areas we will use white dots. I'm just dotting up the whole thing. Can you see the dots now visible? So they give a look of the flower. Okay, now kids who are not able to do this can even do it with a, a gel pen. Because this has got completely dried, you can just use a gel pen, no problem. So I'm doing somewhere I'm doing four dots, somewhere I'm doing five dots. I've not specified any dots, you know, they are just, but they are together. If you want to go ahead and learn different other varieties of, uh, you know, landscapes and watercoloring detailed course, we also have a course uh, on, uh, you know, detailed watercoloring wherein we teach uh, from the basics, okay, how to do different varieties of techniques which are being taught. So... If you guys are interested, you can just get in touch with me or Priyanka directly. That will help us out. So in the watercolor painting course, we will be teaching you how uh, to start the watercolor base. And also, we will be showing you different forms of car techniques and flowers, fruits, vegetables, a wreath. Then um, we also have landscapes in it. So you will be doing around six types of landscapes, a few florals too. So like good enough of practice is given to the children and adults, whoever wants to do it. It's applicable for both children. We have it according to their age group and their base. But uh, for adults, it's a, it's a common course. Now what I will do is I will just take a little bit of crimson. 
can add it you know anywhere where I want so in crimson I am just taking that is the red dots which I told you I am just putting it here and then I am not taking it away you know not making the dots typical uh, flower dots so crimson is basically to show as if there is a flower or maybe a fruit too on the flower uh, on the tree or else it can if you want you can also show that it is a, a dried leaf which is there on the tree so now we are done with our work and once the whole thing gets dried up i will just remove out the tapes which i have used the masking tapes so that uh, it becomes easier for you to see the picture now we are open to questions the blending is not refined no gradation in colors of the sky and tree so uh, see the first thing is that k uh, it is a watercolor base and you need to really work fast on it to get the perfect gradations but uh, if your child is doing it for the first time it's good enough just appreciate it and then let him see the video again and then go ahead with it appreciation for the children is equally important if you appreciate your child even if he is if he is done a little bit of work it helps a lot so I would just request you that you know you appreciate your child for whatever he has done or she has done okay now you can follow us on our page so my page has also been linked up and uh, you can follow me on my page you can follow me on my instagram also but i want you guys the children the kids who have done the work i want you want them to post their work on the whatsapp group so that we can check and uh, see it it was lovely to come down and teach you all and also to learn new things from your kids so i would say thank you thank you priyanka for calling me here and thank you everyone for joining